Good evening, Oswego, and welcome to WTOP 10 Tuesday Night News, your connection to Oswego and beyond. I'm Barry Weigel. And I'm Marissa Sarbach. Today is October 4th, 2011, and this is your news, sports, and weather, all before the first commercial break. Let's take a look at your top stories. 10 News starts now. One person is dead after a helicopter plunged into New York City's East River. Four others were reportedly on board. Dozens of emergency responders rushed to the scene to pull them out. New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg praised the speed of the rescue. Waterborne response or trucks and uh, cars that drove here. Uh, the uh, no response was everything you could ask it to be. And a quicker response couldn't have happened and wouldn't have made any difference, apparently, in terms of saving the people. Two survivors were hospitalized for cardiac and respiratory arrest. Another has been listed in serious condition. The fourth was treated at the scene. No word yet on what caused the crash. A former girlfriend of Michael Jackson's personal physician took the stand in his trial today. Dr. Conrad Murray is charged with involuntary man manslaughter. The prosecution claims Murray was medically negligent and recklessly used the surgical antiseptic propofol to help Jackson sleep. Prosecutors say Murray first realized Jackson wasn't breathing during a phone call with Murray's girlfriend. She described the moment in court. Well, I was just talking and um, the next thing you know, I, was like, I, I said, hello, hello, and I didn't hear anything. And that's when I pressed the phone against my ear and I heard um, mumbling of voices. It sounded like the phone was maybe in his pocket or something. It was shh, and I heard coughing and nobody answered. Murray's lawyers contend Jackson caused his own death by swallowing eight lorazepam pills and taking prop propofol while Murray was out of the room. If convicted, Murray could spend four years in California prison and lose his medical license. Well, it was a pretty chilly day, and I felt some raindrops when I was going to my later classes today. So did I, definitely. Let's take a look at our current conditions outside with meteorologist Julie Budd. Julie, what's it looking like out there? Good evening, Oswego. I'm meteorologist Julie Budd, and I'm outside the Campus Center right now. We're taking a look at your current conditions. Uh, clear skies right now. There are some clouds moving out of the area, and temperatures are in the mid-50s. As you can see from our northeast radar, um, there's pre precipitation to the east, but nothing affecting us right now. And this is going to last into our forecast. As you can see, our three-day forecast uh, is going to be sunny, and the temperatures will be rising. But I'll talk about that more later. Back to you at the desk. It's been a big day in the world of technology. Our technology reporter, Adam Shear, is joining us in the studio with the latest in the world of iPhones. Adam, so what was the announcement today? So there, Apple, Apple made many announcements, but the one most important one was the release of their new iPhone, the iPhone 4S. It may look exactly like the iPhone 4 on the outside, but it's completely different on the inside. They have the new A5 processor, which powers the iPad 2. They have an 8 megapixel camera on there now which also does video recording in 1080p HD. It does HDMI out via a special adapter or through Apple TV which is known as AirPlay. And the most important feature is the Siri voice assistant which is a replacement of the current voice of, it's a replacement of the current voice on iPhone already. Now that was one thing I was excited about when I read the, uh, the Siri voice assistant. I googled it to try to figure out what it was but can you give us a little hint on what that actually is? So more than just being regular voice control, it's an actual AI, artificial intelligence, that assists you in everything you do. It's your own personal assistant, so you can ask it to send a text message and it will. You can type with just your voice, 
and it'll ha it'll display exactly what you're saying. But rather than just knowing the words, it also knows the meaning of what you say. So you can ask Siri what the weather is outside, and it'll give you the current forecast. But you can also ask it, do I need an umbrella? And it will respond yes or no. So it actually, not, rather than understanding just words, it understands the meaning of words, and it's able to form conversations with you even. You can ask it to clear your calendar. You can ask it if you have any events at a certain time. You can ask it for locations, directions, just about anything. Wow, Adam, this sounds really advanced. About how much is it going to cost? So the iPhone 4S on contract is going to be $199 for the 16 gigabyte, $299 for the 32 gigabyte, and $399 for the 64 gigabyte. Those are going to hit AT&T, Verizon, and Sprint. The iPhone 4 is going to be $99 on contract, and the iPhone 3GS is going to be free on contract. Wow, thanks for that, Adam. Thanks for joining us in the studio. A truck filled with explosives barreled into a government complex in the heart of Somalia's capital. According to African Union spokespeople, more than 30 people were killed. Along with students and parents, the casualties included several federal government soldiers. The truck reportedly slammed into the gate of a complex containing several government ministries, including the education ministry. Since when do people get taxed more on food that is fattening? In Denmark, in Denmark is the first country in the world to impose higher taxes on fatty foods, including butter, cheese, milk, and pizza. Its government hopes the new tax will limit obesity and heart disease. Denmark is using a new fatty foods tax to deal with its 10% obesity. However, the U.S. struggles with figures much higher than that. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that about 72.5 million adults in the U.S. are obese. Uh, and now we'll see what's going on in sports with Stuart Seidel. The Oswego State Lakers women's field hockey team improved to 3-1 at home with a strong win over Elmira today. The Lady Lakers outshot Elmira 31-13 and won by a score of 5-3. The Lakers were able to score three times in the first 15 minutes and never gave up the lead. Katie Mazuchowski led the way for the Lakers with two goals. Oswego State's next game comes on the road at Wells College on Thursday at 4 p.m. I'll be back later with some national sports news, but for now, let's send it back to the news desk. The Anheuser-Busch Company has announced that it will invest $27 million in its Baldwinville facility. According to WSYR, the company says the investment will go toward increasing the facility's brewing capacity adding new packaging lines, and upgrading its wastewater treatment process. The central New York plant employs around about 400 people. When Anheuser-Busch was bought by InBev, the company agreed to keep all of its current acquired plants, according to a contract that expires in 2014. A New York man is accused of killing a woman in a high-speed chase with police. Police say it all started when the man stole an elderly woman's purse at a store in Watertown. The man then allegedly sped away with the car, with officers in hot pursuit. According to investigators, the man hit another car driven by an off-duty police officer. The officer's 75-year-old aunt was a passenger in that car. She later died from injuries. He is now facing a manslaughter charge, among other counts. While the current unemployment rate may be discouraging to would-be job seekers, there is one career field which opportunities are plentiful. According to WSYR, nursing is the field to get into. According to officials at Onondaga Community College, the placement rate of students after six months is nearly 100%. According to OCC, its grads are bringing home anywhere from $45,000 to $55,000 per year. Is the weather going to be nice enough to enjoy these fall colors this weekend? Find out after the break. You're watching WTOP 10 at 10. The Oswego MBA program, helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with its flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. 
See top media experts predict the future of mass media. going to be, but hopefully I'll be on the receiving end of that. <laughs> See top media experts predict the future of mass media. Writer Vanessa Woods will be visiting Oswego tomorrow for a Living Writers Talk at 3 p.m. and a keynote address at 7 p.m. During the keynote, Woods will take attendees behind the scenes of Bonobo Handshake, a book that tells the tale of extraordinary courage in both people and our nearest primate relatives, the nearly extinct Bonobo. This Wednesday, October 5th at 1 p.m., there is a hip-hop concert for Peranja. She is considered the unofficial German hip-hop queen. Her concert will take place in the Hewitt Union Ballroom. On Saturday, October 8th at 8 p.m., another concert will be held. Christine Lavin will be performing in the Oswego Music Hall at the McCrovey Building. Lavin is a singer-songwriter who has recorded 20 solo albums over her long career. For tickets, visit oswegomusichall.org. The entire auxiliary services staff and students were upset at the loss of Cindy Ballard over the weekend. 10 News reporter Anthony Hill shows us how Cindy's personality lightened up the Little Page Dining Hall. Students and staff were saddened when they found out that Cindy Ballard had passed away last Wednesday. Cindy was a cashier at Little Page Dining Hall. Assistant manager of Little Page, Mallory Hotelling, expressed what a joy it was to work with Cindy. Cindy was absolutely great as a ticket taker here. She um, was friendly. She'd always tell you to have a great meal. Um, she was very outgoing, very friendly, always came in with a smile no matter what was going on. She, and she was always there for you whenever you needed anything. She'd do anything for anybody. Little Page custodian Samuel Vivlamore says one of his great memories with Cindy was having a cup of coffee over their breaks. Cindy was known to love her small farm here in the town of Oswego. Her pride and joy were her two horses. She commented all the time on how she would throw people like a bale of hay because she had a farm at home and, uh, you know, she's just, just like a tough girl, but she was really soft inside. <laughs> Cindy worked for Auxiliary Services for 24 years. She started off as a cook, and with her bubbling personality, she became the greeter. SUNY Oswego student Severio Lombardi expressed how Cindy's positive attitude rubbed off on him. Um, every day working with her, she just brightened up my face with her smile. Even though Cindy is physically not here, she'll never be forgotten. For 10 News Tonight, I'm Anthony Hill. I don't know if you had a chance to meet Cindy, but I know just walking in that dining hall every time, she always greeted you with a smile on her face. I did. I, I really felt like it was like, it was so nice every time you walked in just to see somebody smiling and, you know, she makes you smile back. It's great. Absolutely. All right. We're going to take a full look at your forecast. Meteorologist Julie Budd. Good evening, I'm meteorologist Julie Budd, and here's another look at your current conditions. Right now it's about 56 degrees outside. You can see the humidity is 99%. Uh, it's pretty high, but it's nothing that we have to worry about right now because everything is moving out of our area. Um, also, we have five mile an hour winds today moving out of the northwest. 
Uh, here's the almanac for today. Today's high was 58, the low was 48. The average for this year, the high is about 63. So we're a little below average, but uh, that's not too bad. Um, record temperature 85 in 1926, uh, low 34 in 1945. Just a trace of precipitation today and the sunset at 642. Um, here's a look at your current conditions, uh, 58 in Syracuse, a high of 64 in New York City. Our low point is in Jamestown, um, 55 degrees, but it's uh, pretty uniform throughout the region. Uh, national radar, you can see that there's some precipitation going on in the west over here, but to the east there's some, you know, little precipitation in Maine, but uh, nothing over our area. And the satellite, you can see that uh, the clouds are moving out of our area and it'll be clear tonight. So um, the temperatures will be dropping and it'll be pretty chilly. So stay inside tonight. Um, here's the fall foliage report. Right now, um, it's midpoint in our area, in Oswego over here. The Adirondacks are almost at their peak. Uh, if you wanna see some fall colors this weekend, it would be a great chance to go because as you'll see later on, that the temperatures are going to be rising. But for now, 11 p.m. tonight, these clouds are, you know, non-existent in the area, which is great. 8 a.m. tomorrow, again, very clear. It'll be sunny when you wake up. Uh, 2 p.m., still clear. Uh, there's some rain going on up here, but it's not bad at all. The surface map, you can see that we have a high-pressure system in Washington right now, and it's going to be pushing this low out of the area and that's going to bring some really nice weather we experienced some crappy weather this weekend but it's going to be much better by the weekend tonight 51 degrees it'll be clear um west five miles an hour nothing too exciting going on tomorrow 62 mostly sunny winds 10 to 20 miles an hour it could get breezy here in oswego um, but that's something that we're used to tomorrow night 37 degrees clear and very chilly there's a chance of frost um, north winds 10 miles an hour and Thursday sunny and nice again 61 it's going to be sunny this is something that we should enjoy while we can and for the extended forecast we have temperatures in the 70s for this weekend it'll be very nice but you can see that low temperatures in the evening so uh, you might want to dress warmly absolutely I guess I can deal with a couple days of seasonable temperatures as long as it's gonna get me some mid 70s this weekend <laughs> uh, yeah we have definitely had temperatures above normal this year and it's been very nice yeah we definitely deserved it honestly <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I agree <laughs> thank you when we come back when we come back we will have Erica grill with your Twitter news I'll see you at the Dr. Lewis B. O'Donnell Media Summit. See top media experts predict the future of mass media. Hi, I'm CNN's Rob Marciano, and you're watching WTOP 10, your television station. The Oswego MBA program, helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. Hi, we're Real Big Fish. And you're watching WTOP10. Like the number. I'm lucky. I get to do something I love. How many of you think homework is just as important as teamwork? I help keep kids in school. Good. And that's the name of the game. My name is LaDainian Thomason. I don't just wear the shirt. I live it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Here's Erica Grill with your very latest Twitter news. Thanks, Marissa. SUNY Oswego Live tweeted today during the celebration of Sheldon's birthday. The school's Twitter account, at SUNY Oswego, tweeted, Happy 188th birthday to our institution's founder, Edward Austin Sheldon. <coughs> today, we celebrate. In celebration of this historic event, staff, students, and faculty members joined together in bright yellow tees to form the number 1861. Over 200 people showed up for the historic event. 
Jersey Shore's Mike Sorrentino, a.k.a. The Situation, was the butt of many tweets yesterday in the, t in the trending topic, hashtag, fake Jeopardy questions. Among the tweets, user at Banana Cupcakes tweeted, he equated Angelina to the Staten Island Ferry. Everyone gets a ride and it's free. Who is The Situation? Another tweet by user at John Wienerman reads, the moron who bashed his head into a concrete wall in an attempt to scare a big dude. Who is the situation? It would certainly be interesting to see some of these questions appear on Jeopardy. Speaking of television shows, creators confirmed Arrested Development will come back for one more season and a movie. Jason Bateman tweeted from his account, at Bateman Jason, It's true. We will do 10 episodes and the movie. Probably shoot them all together next summer for a release in early 2013. Very excited. It had been rumored since the show's cancellation in 2006 that Arrested Development would come out with the movie. For their die-hard fans, this news is very exciting. So you're reading your Twitter feed and it's a little dull. Want to spice it up? Why don't you follow Lord Voldemort? As Time Newsfeed reports, quote, when he's not busy being Harry Potter's sworn nemesis, Lord Voldemort is just like a regular guy, end quote. Among his latest tweets, he said, the Find My App Friends um, excuse me, the Find My Friends app should have been named Find Me Friends because if you're ex this excited over a phone, you probably don't have any. His wittiness and sarcasm have already earned him over 1.7 million followers. Now, don't forget to add my Twitter account, at Erica Grill, WTOP. All right. Well, I know I'm excited for Arrested Development. I was a huge fan of the show. I watch it over and over and over again. You find new things every time, and it's just Absolutely. probably one of the best written shows. You can't get enough of ever. that show. I've actually never seen the show, so I will definitely have All right. to watch it's it. It's a must watch. It's on Hulu and Netflix, so right. you have no it excuse is. anymore. No Absolutely not. <laughs> and just want to plug, I love anything to do with Jersey Shore. I was following that last night. Everyone that came up laughing my head off as, oh, the, uh, absolutely. as the fake the, Jeopardy the questions. The tweets were just That's hilarious. another one I haven't seen. <laughs> yes. Jersey Shore, yeah. yeah. You got those are two must see television Absolutely. shows. Definitely. Thanks, Erica. Sure, thanks. New York State Comptroller Thomas DiNapoli is trying to do something that seems a little out of character for a politician handing out money. The state is trying to find the owners of $11 billion in unclaimed funds. The Napoli is trying to match the owners to the money left in bank account or other funds. New Yorkers can also look to see if there's any money that is theirs through DiNapoli's website or by calling 1-800-221-9311. The website, which is the state comptroller's website, also carries additional facts about securing those unclaimed funds. First thing on Monday morning, children in a New York City school arrived as they usually do. They found police officers conducting a search on stolen electronics. Some are made off with close to $27,000 in computer and equipment over the long holiday weekend. There are about 220 students in the school, from pre-K to fifth grade, and parents say the computers were an integral part of their learning experience. The NYPD says a formal complaint has been filed and the police are conducting an investigation. No suspects have yet to be named. And now we're going to take a full look at sports with Stuart Seidel. The Rangers are the first team to punch their ticket to the second round of the MLB playoffs. The Rangers were able to close out the Tampa Bay Rays in four games as they defeated them today in Tampa by a score of 4-3. to three. Adrian Beltre provided almost all of the offense for the Rangers, going three for four with three solo home runs. The Rangers will play the winner of the Yankees Tigers series, who are playing right now, and the Tigers lead the series two games to one. Some National League games are also going on tonight as the Phillies and Cardinals played a pivotal game three in St. Louis. It was a pitcher's duel until the Phillies pinch hitter Ben Francisco hit a three run home run in the seventh to give the Phillies a three to nothing lead. They would hold on for a 3-2 victory and lead the series two games to one. The other National League game going on tonight are the Brewers and the Diamondbacks as the Brewers are looking for the sweep in Arizona. And Commissioner David Stern made the announcement today that if there is no labor agreement made by Monday, then the NBA will cancel the first two weeks of the regular season. 
They have already announced that there will be no preseason games, and now they are at risk of losing regular season games after the owners and players met for around four hours on Tuesday, but did not come any closer to an agreement. That's it for sports. Now back over the news desk. When we come back, we're going to take a look at the lighter side of news. But first, a break. program helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. See top media experts predict the future of mass media. going to be, but hopefully I'll be on the receiving end of that. <laughs> See top media experts predict the future of mass media. Here's a dive into the lighter side of news. A bear and a monkey in a heated competition, a giant Halloween monster, and one tough 83-year-old. The video that will have you talking is in Take a Look at This. Take a look at this. A monkey and a bear compete to raise the flag first. The two and a half year old monkey was much faster. They were showing off their skills in a talent show at a wildlife park in China. But now check out that bear roller skating. And he can even ride a bike. What a pro. Could this be the great pumpkin Charlie Brown stayed up all night for? This monster weighs over 1,600 pounds. The man who grew it says his secret ingredient is cow manure. The Big Orange Beauty will be featured in the Leesburg Halloween Parade. She might not be too speedy, but this 83-year-old is a seasoned marathon runner. Janine Jolson is running her 53rd marathon. She's also a breast cancer survivor. I've seen people in the back, and I could do that, and that's where I still am, in the back. But she always crosses that finish line with a smile. I want to keep running as long as I think I can do it. You know, and I don't know how long that'll be. For Take a Look at This, I'm Andy Rose. It may have been the wrong purchase, but a lottery ticket turned out to be the perfect pick for a Georgia woman. Kathy Scruggs intended to buy a Mega Millions ticket. Instead, the clerk gave her a Powerball ticket. Turns out that Powerball ticket held a $25 million win. Scruggs says she plans to travel and help out her family. Like I said, my biggest plans are to build a house for my mom and grandmother because they never really had a nice home. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's my gift to them and for myself. Of course, I don't have a car, so of course a car. Oh, yeah. All right. Scruggs also plans to start a foundation to help the homeless. So what do you think, that uh, bear on rollerblades there? I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't even know if I can believe that. He did a better job than I could, so. Oh, yeah? That's yeah, impressive. They can teach animals to do just about anything these right, days, really. Cool. It is. Let's take a look at your class day forecast. Hi, again. I'm meteorologist Julie Bud. Your class day forecast tomorrow, we're looking at sun in the morning. It'll be awesome, except for it's going to be a little chilly. But you can expect sun throughout the day. and. Uh, we'll be getting into the mid-60s as you go throughout. 
All right, that's going to do it for us here. But on behalf of the entire 10 News team, have a great night, Oswego.